Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader. Let me go to full screen for a moment. Uh, welcome to this training session. In today's session, I'm going to be going through uh, a number of our core setups when trading CL. Now remember, it doesn't matter which market you trade, you apply the exact same setups to that market. Now, of course, we do take into account that some markets have different personalities, some are more volatile than others, but we will cover the most essential setups. We'll talk about uh, the two Bs, how to recognize two Bs, 34 Bs. Uh, we'll look at two Ds and a range of other setups. Now, I've also got a number of handouts for you, and I'll show you where on the Google Drive you'll be able to access those handouts. Now, I recommend that you uh, get your notebook uh, and a pen and uh, focus for the next hour or so on what I'm going to cover. Now, I'm going to be producing more of these on a regular basis for our members, so uh, hopefully, you get a great deal out of this video. So, let me now go to full screen. There we go, just make it easier. And I'm just going to uh, what else did I want to do just there? I know, pull up my pointer, let's get that uh, underway. So there we go. So as I mentioned, it doesn't matter which market you trade, whether it be futures, forex, or stocks, you'll apply the exact same uh, setups to those markets. Now I'm going to go through setups step by step, exactly what I'm looking for. So we'll be going from the right hand side of the screen. At times, we will look at the uh, anchor charts as well particularly when we're looking at divergence or support resistance levels. Now, if you haven't traded CL before, CL for Texas T for black gold is $10 a tick on the big contract. Typically, it turns over $200,000 to $400,000, so 400000 <laughs> 400000 not dollars per contracts uh, per day and now we've got the micro contract MCL which is a dollar a tick so I've got a handout which Raymond one of our members prepared uh, some time ago I think you'll find interesting so MLC MCL sorry can be or may be a great starting point for you uh, and then springboard into trading the larger contract so let me get the disclaimer over and done with so traders we do know there's a risk in trading don't trade with money that you can't afford to lose and as you're watching a recording here uh, please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer in full let's start off with some of the basics and I think it's very important that we look at the basics so when it comes to CL and remember this spreadsheet is in the members area okay so you can find this spreadsheet in the members area as you know I've got a very strict rule of a maximum of 2% risk what you may even do as you build your account you really want to drop that down to 0.5 or even 1% yes that will mean a lower return on equity but it also makes day trading a lot easier you have a lot more comfort if you like now down here we're going to be specifically looking at the one and two tick now based upon ten dollars a tick and the two percent rule you would require between three and four thousand dollars minimum to trade this market and I would say four thousand now of course you can trade the micro so you need a lot less than that in fact you'll see on the little word document I've got for you in a few moments we talk about having seven hundred dollars capital and we're assuming here that you're going to be trading at times the four tick what's the difference well during the globe session, for an example I'm recording this at 1225 uh, a.m. Central Standard Time the market is quite slow so quite often we are able to drop down and trade a one tick then we've got the two tick and that's fairly typical during the globe session now during COVID uh, there was extreme volatility and oil was a very difficult market to trade in fact where I traded uh, oil a great deal going back a couple of years ago I basically stopped right through the COVID period just because of that volatility and a number of other issues with the market the uh, margins went up and there was all sorts of challenges now 
if you're going to trade during the New York hours don't try to trade the two tick yes at times and particularly in the afternoon the two ticks fine but realistically during the day during the New York hours the four tick is a more realistic uh, time frame to be trading now at the same time you can go for a much larger target as well and we'll look at that in a moment now as we go to any market you know that uh, as members I bring this up regularly that is in having a goal or a target for the market that you're trading now if you're new to CL maybe this is going to assist you in setting some goals in where you'd like to take your trading if you um, focused on CL now what's proven traders is that your first step to setting goal is to put it in writing okay and it's now proven that you're 39.5 percent more li likely to succeed if it's in writing nearly 80 percent if you then review your written goals each week and you go back over how can I improve this how can I do this better it will make a massive difference to your trading and the reason I bring this up is this now we know that trading particularly day trading can be life-changing okay and for an example I know for most traders an extra five thousand dollars a week would make a massive difference how do, how do you realistically achieve that well in this case looking at the CL if you are trading four contracts by $250 a day each and I will show you how we do that today that's a thousand dollars a day that in my opinion is a very realistic target as you're going to see when we get to the charts and we start to look at the trades and how they set up now your target may just be 500 a week maybe a thousand a week it really comes down to setting a goal that you're comfortable with maybe stretching a little bit okay but uh, you've also got to remember you've got to stay within the two percent risk rule now if we then looked at trading four contracts and if we then go back to this um, chart here so we'd need say if we're trading the two tick trading four contracts realistically we need around 16 to twenty thousand dollars however what other uh, business or yeah business do you know where for an outlay of sixteen to twenty thousand dollars you got the potential of earning five thousand dollars a week that's a reality in trading this market if you trade it correctly so what we're going to do look at then is uh, so I just wanted to bring this up by the way so I move along um, many of you have heard me go five by five yes I can three by eight yes I can that's an incantation uh, an incantation actually means magic spell an incantation to, re to raise the dead and you hear me talk about NLP techniques and getting your mindset right well I specifically put this together many years ago for trading CL and that is I tend to find that um, trading the uh, 233 tick chart the actual tick chart itself or the two to four tick chart you romp five tick trades in okay there's a ton of five tick trades every day and they tend to be your 21 B's your 34 B's or maybe a pivot magnet trades um, and so your rule of ones your t2's your t25's your floor trader strategies on the other hand trading the two B's because they're a deeper pullback will generally achieve a larger target so that's where the three by eight comes in so if we go for five by five net trades a day scalps if you like and slightly larger trade trades are um, that has been eight ticks that's over four hundred dollars a day trading CL that is the reality the honest reality of this market if you're willing to put in two to three hours a day okay you've got to once again you like right now as you'll see when we go to the charts it's very quiet right now day after midnight uh, in another two and a half hours we've got the London open so one and a half hours we've got the Frankfurt open so we'll see an uptick in the volume being traded so basically it really comes down to getting to know the market and what's really achievable and I'm going to show you that today so first of all you know we've got the uh, our spreadsheet 
um, here and that's um, uh, a compound contract now here if you've got 4,000 in your account which will only allow you to trade a two tick and even then there can be some limitations by the way so with a $4,000 account 2% of 4,000 is $80 okay so that's eight ticks however sometimes you may have up to a 10 tick stop if you're waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close on a reversal we will see that when we get to the chart so this is really the bare minimum now I know I mentioned the one tick and I just want to re-emphasize this in fairness that the the one tick is fantastic like right now however that may only be tradable 10 to 20 percent of the time so you really need to have that four to five thousand now on two hundred dollars a day only two hundred dollars a day which is three eight tick trades or three uh, two B trades a day after commissions and like with ninja trader at the moment in recording this um, uh, it's for uh, what is it uh, Four fifty-two, and on the micro sale it's a dollar fifty two per round turn so I only need three golden trades a day or five five tick trades a day within we can see down here within 12 weeks I've got the potential there of earning over ten thousand dollars a week now just very quickly for newer members that haven't seen this spreadsheet this is very conservative because how this works is you only start trading a second contract once you double your money so therefore you start off with four thousand dollars you're earning your two hundred dollars a day you keep banking it. you keep banking it and once your capital has reached eight thousand then and only then do you start trading your second contract so yes I could show you all sorts of spreadsheets that will show millions on your bottom line but let's be realistic here now of course many of you are in my live trading room and in my live coaching session so I've got to talk reality this is the realistic conservative approach now what if we were to re be really serious on this and based upon a two tick once again you went for three hundred dollars a day now there you're putting your work in you're doing a good two to three hours a day um, and once again there are periods when the markets very quiet uh, you you have the potential of being there within seven weeks eight weeks to be effect to be exact okay you're on your ten thousand dollars a week now look at your capital growing at that stage as well so take the conservative approach start on the micro and build from there that is the true potential in this market now let's start to talk trading the market there are a number of very important considerations that we need to take into account in trading any market whether it be Forex whether it be gold whether it be the ES the NQ the micros stocks or oil it doesn't matter first thing we're going to take into account is our floor pivots now these are what we call predictive leading indicators and price magnets because with your floor pivots so many professionals uh, we trade them we trade into them and we trade the bounces so we've got what we call pivot magnet trades uh, you'll see PowerPoints there and we call it in the PowerPoints there pivot magnets and t28s uh, and we have what we call pivot bounces some of your best divergence trades will come off a pivot bounce the prior days open high low and close somewhat similar to floor pivots lots of us will trade those will target those or will use them as support resistance levels uh, and with both of those of course with virtually every trading platform now there are great indicators that will um, allow you to plot these automatically so in the members area uh, we've got for in for ninja trader uh, and other various platforms you'll see some of these indicators if we don't have them for whichever trading platform for an example trading view has got its own set of floor pivots I believe and open high low and close just start uh, just Google free um, floor pivots for and it'll come up you'll find them that way the next thing we want to be really concerned about as we day trade is the major EMAs 
that is the 89 and 200 particularly for 200 your 200 EMA acts as a major support resistance level on all markets and all time frames now as we're trading CL today we're uh, or looking at how we would trade I should actually be exact there there are uh, our special numbers resistance support areas now what I've uploaded actually let me show you where the folder is whoops I think I might have closed it let me just quickly log into it again and show you this let me just pull this over for you now in the members area so if you're a new member of course is literally a gold mine of resources here but down here you will find um, it's marked number one masterclass for second of the fourth 2023 so the handouts that I'm referring to today are in this folder okay so I'll refer to a number of these and I've uploaded including the compound calculator in the account size document now yes there's there's I'm just making sure it was there <laughs> the CL uh, special uh, document I've got here is this one so and let me perhaps just uh, maybe just expand that make it a little bit easier for you to see oops go back the other way so let's just do this maybe a bit more just a little bit more so a couple of very important things here uh, opening bell is 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and now this is where CL is also unique I when I was trading the New York open and now I'm back in Australia I'm not trading the uh, the oil open at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, so I mind you it's a great market in the afternoon and it's a great market in the morning the globe accession suits me much better because that is uh, 11 p.m. 12 p.m my time but what I was about to say was during the opening bell of most markets I will stand aside because I'd call it the killing field and in fact I've also uploaded this little document for you and this is just uh, in my time frame is that uh, Tokyo in 9 a.m. Brisbane time uh, it's 8 a.m. Shanghai's uh, 7 a.m. and the reason this is important when it comes to oil China of course is the world's I think now largest user of or, or consumer of oil and that's 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. the Shanghai open is actually 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we will nearly always see a spike one way or another on oil at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so I recommend that you just take the time just to work out to, so I've uploaded this for you uh, just to take the time to set up your own local time frame so you know what's happening internationally so this is um, uh, of course uh, 6 p.m. tells me what it, what's happening in Shanghai these are important times I should say for me personally so I've just uploaded that for you now I don't want to be caught at the open of these markets Frankfurt 9 a.m. London at 9 a.m. Okay, so uh, Frankfurt of course is Germany is one hour before London now what I was about to say that with CL I've found that you can still be in a trade at 9 a.m. without any real issues that is it tends to still trend in that trade direction but as but as always just go back and verify it and check it out for yourself now oil is a little unique instead of rolling over quarterly it rolls over on or about the 18th of every month so you only want to trade the, the contract that has the most volume so I won't roll over so like Friday <coughs> excuse me Friday might be a sit for 17th of a 16th you'll generally find you'll roll over on that day okay and so I'm looking for trading the contract with the most volume CL $10 a tick now floor these are price magnets your floor pivots which you'll see on the charts the round numbers being 60 70 71 72 73 you'll see that we these act as price magnets the open high low and close on the prior days and now of course my indicators plot all of these but we also want to plot here that 50 
uh, sorry 20 50 and 80 cent levels they are also very important now a big market mover is the status report 10:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays? If there's been a public holiday on the Monday in the U.S., it's 11 a.m. on Thursday, 30 minutes after the gas report. You do not want to be caught in the status report. The market can go absolutely crazy. A couple of other things like the 10 a.m. shock, you'll quite often find of the market for some reason will really move around that time. I don't know why. The afternoon, which is the old pit session close there's still some traditional moves around that time now if you're trading tick charts during the New York session I love the 233 tick chart okay and I'll have the 610 will be my anchor chart one now for trading uh, Renko uh, if I'm trading the one tick I'll have one two and four so my entry chart is a one tick uh, anchor chart one is two uh, anchor chart two is four uh, or it'll be a two four and a seven entry chart is two ticks anchor chart one is four anchor chart two is seven or a four seven and twelve for during the New York hours okay four tick is my entry seven is anchor chart one and twelve ticks is my anchor chart two but as always we just want to check out the speed of the market now if it's above four ticks the market's moving that quickly I can't even trade a four tick uh, chart I'd prefer to sit that particular market out and yes this handout is in the folder we also want to take in consideration major swing highs and lows because they can act as support and resistance areas as does the current day's high and low and so once again I've got an indicator for, for ninja trader that will plot that automatically but nearly every trading platform you'll be able to find an indicator that will do that as well now as we're about to go to the charts so I want to point out that uh, in the members area and I've actually also uploaded it into uh, today's folder for this uh, webinar don't forget you can review the trading terms and abbreviations used where this document uh, is six pages long and it goes through every single abbreviation it's all right you don't have to learn all six pages but it's a ready cheat sheet if you like you can quickly look at if I ever talk about a t3 uh, t4 it's all in this uh, sheet here along with a lot of other uh, terminology etc I'll use when I'm trading so that is also if you miss something that is in the folder as well now this is an important one here that Raymond one of our valued members prepared for us last year and so taking a conservative and realistic approach to trading MCL and here um, uh, looking at trading this market with uh, a target of $20 a day so we used to have a real slippage problem on MCL it's got a little better but it's still a bit of an issue because the micro oil is uh, treated uh, the contracts traded differently than what say the micros on say ES and the NQ uh, and a few of the other markets you will tend to find that you'll get a bit more slip on it however treat it just simply as um, uh, as part of your cost of your education initially so going for just twenty dollars a day this is where you can end up now this is the shame of this or where it comes to many traders and it's something called greed and that is what I'm about to show you will give you potentially a massive return on your capital on only twenty dollars a day but most traders get greedy they break their money management rules and they lose a the capital time and time again which then ruins their confidence on this particular um, chart here if you earn just twenty dollars a day net starting with starting capital of seven hundred dollars it will take you 17 weeks to build that capital to six thousand dollars 17 weeks that's only $20 a day same rule applies every time you have an additional $700 you can start trading another micro after that 
you've now got your big boy pants on or big girl pants on and you're now trading the big contract and so within 18 weeks you've got the potential of earning your ten thousand dollars a week your capitals up there at around um, uh, sixty seventy thousand uh, dollars that is the true potential now how do we actually get twenty dollars a day well this is where with the profit calculator which is in the members area also at uh, tick value of a dollar your commission typically we'd have on a two tick chart an eight tick stop with a target of eight ticks and with an 80 20 and of course you can change all these parameters here you need to execute around six trades a day okay using these stats now of course if you drop that down uh, down to say six you'll probably need to execute around uh, that is an eight tick stop and don't uh, mock that by the way having a, a, a six tick sorry a six tick target eight tick stop um, uh, it's typically up around 80 84 percent win loss ratio okay yes you're going to have to undertake or execute more trades but look where you end up so this is where it comes down to really spending some serious time on your trading plan and of course come and join the coaching sessions if you're not already in the coaching sessions of a live room we talk about these sorts of subjects each and every day okay what setups are we going to be looking at today well these are the ones that I may mention as we go through so 34 B's the 89 B's which usually will end up being a 2B the super scalper the slingshot the rule of one the t25 is the old floor trader strategy and of course market reversals t20 t20-1 for 521 all of these are in your document so in the um, abbreviations document now with any trade we also need to consider our entry where we're going to enter where we're going to place our stop and what's our target and that is where our target will vary what's in front of me and you'll hear me say regularly do I have blue skies ahead and what I mean by that is there anything directly in front of me like a pivot like a major EMA like a major swing high swing low all of these can have or major divergence for an example all of these things can dramatically affect your target and we'll be talking about these when we get to the charts with in a minute <laughs> uh, the time of day is also very important like if we look at uh, right now where I am in my part part of the world let's just let me just show you this uh, if we go to here this is for two tick okay uh, so we start at one o'clock uh, so that there this is 49 minutes of price action here uh, on for two tick but what we can see here there's been a couple of nice trades here this one I probably wouldn't have taken uh, why see how flat we are just there we're very flat yes there's some nice scalps here uh, but I think we're sort of deep pulling back deeper and deeper and so I probably would not have taken that one aha uh -huh, but there's a five two one there maybe I'll change my mind about that but we'll get, I'll talk about that in a moment and look at that t10 over here and look at that angulation so we can see we've got a beautiful move there and look at our MACD BB which I'll talk about in a moment but what I wanted to point out this is 49 minutes of price action now let's look at the one tick chart so we can see the one tick chart is back here see that flat sideways action I just mentioned to you this is the area where we want to be very very cautious on but see that little point there now that there is a t25 okay that's a two to five candle pullback you've got your MACD you've got your long-term stochastic and there is your slingshot all in the direction of the trend so we are at a pivot which might have sort of we'd be thinking are we going to get through it you can see we had initially had a little pivot bounce but uh, we want to look at the one tick if it's low enough but what we'll then be doing you see is I'd look at the one the two and the four that gives me a big picture look now we'll get back to uh, this back to the PowerPoint I'm jumping the gun here a little bit now that uh, young lady you can see on the screen that's my daughter by the way 
I'm always uh, always mention that just in case people think who's that older guy with the young girl, <laughs> young the young woman I should say. She's 19 now, so I shouldn't say young girl. That's my darling daughter Kiara. All right, time of day. Red flag news, of course. We've got to really be aware that uh, major red flag news and where are our pivots. So let me start here. So before we got underway today, a few hours ago. I just started to get ready for this session and I just looked over the chart and just thought hmm here's some really good examples here of setups that uh, and I just thought there's so many on this one I, I thought oh, I'm going to quickly mark these up and point these out first of all we had a 521 which is the 5 EMA crossing the 21 so you had one there their trend continuation one there and one over here there's your T20 T20 uh, coincides with the 50 CCI zero line crossover thank you very much you then had another t20 just there thank you very much and then you had another t20 just there now what I love also after t20s is the t20-1 that's the first pullback after a t20 look you had a little one there I look that was a rule of one and I'll talk about that in a moment but over here price rallied up price came down and that was a t20-1 which happened to also be a 34b and a 34b now a special mention about this if you looked at this is a two tick by the way you'll notice here that I've got the uh, MACD BB now if you've got a trading platform that doesn't have a good MACD BB that's mighty fine okay uh, because really if you look at your long-term stochastic that matches very closely to what the MACD BB is doing see your long-term stochastic there it's basically plotting along at the same pace as your MACD BB now a MACD BB consists of two indicators a Bollinger Band which is a volatility indicator and a MACD BB which is the um, yellow the green the black red dots you can see there and that red line in between that's the midline band of the um, Bollinger Band so you've got both a trend following indicator and a uh, volatility indicator rolled into one however if you don't have it don't worry about it okay because you can simply follow your long-term stochastic now what I wanted to mention here was with oil there's always some fantastic scalping opportunities if you enter oil for an example just there and did I have the handout uh, yes I did right there good I'll refer to that in a moment entering there using what we call a rule of one scalping when you scalp a market like really these could be scalps see so floor trader setups but you've got one there you've got a good one there good one there and even this one was one right there is that on the anchor chart one both the MACD BB and the long-term stochastic on your higher time frame confirmed those trades so in other words we're looking for a pullback and a trend continuation back in the direction of a higher time frame it's very powerful when you get a, a scalping opportunity now it's a little more challenging with these scalps on the micros because you've commission cost for an example here uh, your commissions uh, cost is $1.52 on the micro CL if you were trading 10 lots that's $15.20 compared to four dollars fifty two so you go and scalp say just one tick or you get out with just one tick you're still picking up some profit where you go and scale you really need to really be getting two ticks to sort of little over break even so if you're trading say uh, CL gold or even uh, the ES when you're looking at 10 12 dollars 50 a tick I really like the scalping mind you you know you can still do okay also of course on the NQ but I just wanted to point that out that each one of these step downs is worth ten dollars now this is something we're in the trading room and uh, in the coaching sessions we talk regularly about 
is the cloud now where you can see the orange cloud just there I've got the cloud plots from the time the 5 EMA crosses under the 21 and right back to the 89 EMA I sort of find that the 89 EMA is sort of the ideal pullback once I start to get deeper pullbacks past the 89 EMA you know yes we'll get our 200 B's and we'll get our T12's but I you know I'm getting a lot more suspicious they are a lower probability trade so where you hear me say follow the cloud here you'd be looking for all trade entries in the direction of the orange cloud but once we get to this point here what's happening on the anchor chart and you can see now that a new cloud is forming okay so I'm looking for long trades and so the 521 the 5 crossing the 21 pretty much identifies when I'm going to have a change in the cloud now for new members watching this video don't feel overwhelmed just watch it a number of times and I'm going to be recording a number of these okay so you'll be able to pick these up and of course there's many in the members area and in your welcome emails so um, patience just go back and take your time and watch them now a couple of other really important setups we also had there was one back here if I remember correctly off screen but one here and one there we had uh, a couple of t3s so a t3 is a reversion to the mean setup and we're counting a minimum from the height of a first reversal candle am I eight ticks away I actually that's not true it's seven ticks away in this case where each step is worth one tick or seven steps away from the 34 EMA when we're seven steps away and that was a minimum of eight steps this one was nine steps uh, very high probability trade you're going to go up there and at least kiss the 34 now this is what you've got to watch is as the 34 comes down quite often we'll go up there and kiss that and here we actually didn't break through it there we did and up here we had a bit of a wriggle but then it finally pushed through so a t3 acts very much like a divergence trade however quite often you don't have divergence now then rallied up turned into a 34b come down and now it's a 2d we've got double divergence on one on our entry chart one on our anchor chart one as well as double divergence on your MACD platinum and on your MACD BB it was also a t7 which is a double bottom so that sort of made this somewhat of a loaded trade what would have made it perfect is if it was bouncing off a pivot okay and uh, that was a really nice 2d up we come now if you're looking for the safe way of trading of course you you've got this one here your 34b and your 34b and then we rolled over so there's a, a multiple number of different trades here and as I mentioned here and here both the anchor chart MACDBB and if you don't have that or you've got the MACDBB and the long-term stochastic both of those were confirming the trend for these scalps in that trade direction so let's now go to the charts hello Kiara so let's just uh, go back to uh, here and by the way here is a t3 right now so let me just show you this t3 uh, so let's mark this up and show you now I've just got to quickly confirm it's a t3 and I can tell you right now it's going to be you'll soon get very um, you know you'll develop the habit of of noticing these trades and picking them uh, quite easily after a period of time now let me just uh, get that one off where are we 80 sorry everyone just got to get that back up to 80 and I'll explain this to you and that's almost perfect there and that one there ah it's all right everyone I'll just uh, nothing like doing things live <laughs> all right here's what we want to do so we're, now we're waiting for the super scalper anyway the white paint bar as soon as you have a reversal candle set up and remember this will apply to all markets and time frames this probably by the way is, is actually a 2b right now this is a, a 2b this is where if you were to drop your and I'm going to 
getting distracted here drop your fib levels in but we'll talk about that in a moment now as soon as you have a deep pullback this is called angulation we've got this angle angling away here so when you've got this angling away that's angulation you're much more likely of course and that's really necessary to have a t3 setup and a t3 quite often will not have divergence so from the first reversal candle I want to count down seven steps one two three four five six seven uh, that's at least eight steps and I call those steps doesn't matter what time frame you're trading we call those steps okay so at least eight steps down and that also is a t12 <laughs> sorry I'll point that out uh, so there that was a perfect t3 let's look at this one price comes down here we quickly uh, first reversal candle I just drop a horizontal line in just do a quick look so seven steps from the high one two three four easily that's eight or nine steps just see that there traders is what we call a t3 okay so that is a t3 as you can see both of those worked out to be beautiful trades now remember we are not entering these trades until the super, super scalper is plotted and ideally the anchor chart one candle is reversed as well now that's taking it very conservatively a more aggressive entry is to enter on the super scalper okay but the reason it works so well it's a mean reversion trade now with this particular trade here very important look at look where we just bounced now see how we bounced off for 200 that made it a t12 now where's and I mentioned here that this is a 2b short where would our logical target be back down here at the 200 EMA now remember a few minutes ago uh, when we were talking about major EMAs the 200 your most powerful okay so there we came down we formed a t12 that was a reason to go long if you are trading with the cloud only you may not have taken that one okay you're trading in the direction of the cloud but for more experienced traders when you've got a t3 a mean reversion and a 200b on the higher time frame that makes this a very high probability trade so up to the 89 and you can see just there we're bouncing on your entry chart and you're bouncing on your anchor chart one now normally speaking if we're taking this trade I'll be expecting price to come back down and retest this low at the 200 now of course that may not happen and that's the very reason why we want to be managing our trade um, uh, going to break even when we meet our rules now just on this one by the way where would my entry be my entry on this one is see how we've had one two three four five six reversal candles just here I really want to enter this trade by waiting for the anchor chart one now the most conservative way this is waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close which is at even though it says 76 here it actually be 75 which is right there so I would not be in the trade until 75 now thanks to the uh, bar status indicator here I can put a sell stop in or a buy stop in in the market so as soon as this started to set up traders I look over here and this tells me when to put my buy stop or sell stop in now if I'm in at 75 the high of that candle there is 83 so my stop ideally I want to have is one tick above so I would actually have a nine tick stop which is $90 now remember I mentioned to you that at times when you're waiting for your anchor chart one candle to close that um, uh, you might have a nine or ten tick stop that's why if you're waiting for the anchor chart now you can enter on just what's that 200 down here as I mentioned you can enter of course on the super scalper that is three lower closes now what that means is effectively if you used to sell stop you would have an eight tick stop rather than a nine tick stop but when you've got a reversal like 
this here uh, it's nice to have your anchor chart one candle close back in the direction of the trade confirming the move so your t3 and that there by the way is a 34b just there now just remember right below us we've got the 200 now I may as well keep explaining this as we're live right now a good example so if you would have taken this 34b here you could enter using what we call the rule of one whenever you've got a nice trending market or you've got uh, the uh, 34 EMAs in a nice downtrend and the prior candles have been closing red you can enter on a slingshot which we had just there and on the close of the anchor chart on the entry chart candle now what that means is this now by the way looking at this here which we haven't spoken about what's the direction of the trend at the moment we are very clearly in an uptrend the trades we're taking here technically are counter trend trades much higher probability there and the other thing I want you to notice here is look at my MACD BB see I've got a lower low here what you'll see quite often will come back down get another bounce off for 200 and you'll end up with a beautiful divergence trade now no guarantees there's only you know certainties in this business only probabilities that's what I'd usually expect to happen here for this to come right back down tests the low and maybe end up with a divergence trade now uh, what I'll, I'll just show you this document here that I referred to before so this is also in the folder so if you're trading the two tick Renko okay and under the settings it's a one tick offset okay uh, here if you're trading with the T1 that is waiting for the paint bar to finish and you're entering using a stop entry order typically your stop loss is going to be eight ticks if you tuck your stop under or above if you can get in at the close of a third brick you've got a seven tick stop now down here if you're entering using a rule of one that is waiting for a slingshot in or are using a buy stop and you've got a six tick stop and the difference is that's eighty dollars this is sixty dollars so I'd love to have a six tick stop wherever possible now of course you don't have to do what I do where I like to put my stop one tick above or below but over many years that has been proven for me to be the best way of trading now if you're trading a four tick Renko you're going to typically have a 30 a 13 tick stop which is $130 up to $150 okay up to 15 ticks yet 10 ticks to 12 ticks if you're using the rule of one the difference is the rule of one we're able to enter on the close of a first candle this here no way know what I enter that using a rule of one why my EMAs are flat I only want to enter a rule of one entry when I've got trending EMAs okay when I've got a nice trend and even better still if the long-term stochastic on the anchor chart one is also trending and the 21 EMA is also trending in the direction of my trade now if we look at this just over here see the white dots on my anchor chart let me just expand this for a moment for you those white dots you may think gee what are, what, what are they for all that is is a one EMA crossing back over for 21 that is correct you heard right a one EMA crossing back over for 21 your 21 EMA can be one of the best trend directional tools on your anchor chart or for day trading full stop you'll ever trade with it is what's the 21 EMA on my anchor chart excuse me uh, telling me now you might then say well look I can do without the anchor charts and just focus on the EMAs on my entry chart that is true 
but what you then tend to miss out on then is if you don't have your anchor charts is things like this where you're bouncing off for 200 right and you, you'll get these trades every single day of the week you got these large EMA bounces you'll sell down in and you'll bounce straight off them so they become both uh, pivot magnet trades and support resistance trades so back to uh, this here now you can see here uh, we've come up here our stop would have been one tick above now here is a good example of this 34b I just mentioned where at the moment having my stop one tick above just save me with this candle coming back here and testing the high just there so my entry would have been on the close of this candle which what it really means is I'd be in on the close of a second candle now the market's still quite slow at the moment and that's where of course just looking here just for a quick minute at the one tick okay it looks a little messier but once you get used to the patterns traders uh, and once again scalping three to four ticks you don't want to be scalping against the cloud now you've got the cloud on your side and look at your slingshots on the way down all right I'm jumping ahead there so let's now uh, go to this particular chart here and what we're going to do then is I'm going to go to us um, tick by tick to the right hand side and yes we'll go back and see what happens with that uh, 34b trending down to there and this is live by the way uh, so um, this is on the uh, third of the fourth as we or well, the fourth of a third <laughs> no I'm, sometimes I get it screwed up with the US times okay so it's the uh, um, third day of April okay in the USA so if you want to go back there it's at 103 uh, Central Standard Time all right so the third of the fourth 2023 if you wanted to go and have a look uh, at whatever happens here okay you can see there that's the time and this is live now what we're going to do here is let me get back to where are we get back to is it this one yes so let me expand this just here so what we're going to do this is uh, starting from the open of a globe session on the second of the fourth so effectively on the open of the Monday market so in the US so the second of the fourth these times at the bottom here are central standard time now the Globex market opens at 1700 hours 5 p.m. central now first thing first when the market opens uh, we need to allow at least five to ten minutes and usually it's five minutes but if you look at this here and you'll quite often find this on a Monday when oil opens up you'll have a lot of quite often volatility uh, or a lot of price action as the market settles down from the weekend news and what's been happening globally so if you look at this here the market went really quite crazy this is our uh, two minutes in and so we probably want to give this at least 10 minutes when it's like this look see this is still two minutes so you can see this is very very fast okay very very fast so when it's like this uh, I don't want to jump in even when it slows down initially because you never know when it's going to take off again as it can do now as we're looking at this by the way you can see up here 81.20 see the price magnet see where price rallied up and we bounced that's there at and that's there at um, right there at 81 this is uh, $80.80 so you bounced there so perhaps you can start to see the importance of learning these levels because they become uh, support and resistance here's resistance now it's support now it looks like we're starting look that's still very very fast now some traders they're going to be happy scalping uh, this fast but really 
I prefer to have thinking time now it's not my 63 years of age slowing me down it's nearly it's well actually it's 28 years of trading experience saying just sit back and wait till it slows down all right so I look at this here 10 minutes now we're slowing down now this is also quite a danger zone so let's start from here traders but we also need to be very aware of something we can see here that we're right at the $81 a barrel level you can see here the 200 EMA is flat so is my 89 EMA now what we want to do is to be able to clearly identify the start of a new trend how do we do that when we're in sideways action or actually jumping ahead a bit there how do we identify a trend well the footprints to a new trend are a series of higher highs and higher lows or lower lows and lower highs now let's just say for an example just here see in this particular case how we had a bit of a trading range here then we made a new higher high but see how then we come way back down again All right we plot around here and I cross back under the 200 when price action is above the 200 we generally have a bias to the long side when price action and this goes with any time frame when price action is under the 200 we've generally got a bias to the short side I then want to know is what are my EMAs doing are we above the 200 EMA or are we below the 200 so if we look at this now so this is 10 past this is still fairly quickly fast look now we've made a new lower low here what I might do is sort of ignore the time here a little bit just so I can explain these because this is quite choppy and, and I should mention here too sometimes you need to look for another market what do we do if for an hour it keeps going ballistic like this maybe you look at gold maybe you look at ES or the currency futures which I also love right so you may look at another market when you've got this sort of um, price action happening but let's assume here for a moment that it does start to slow down which it normally does what I've now made here traders is a new lower low I've broken the low over here so I've got a new lower low in the market look up here see how my major EMAs are now starting to roll over see the blue arrows up here see they're crossing backwards and forwards that's our T20 now the T20 is telling me that the 8's going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards we are in a zone of chop now just over here you did have a 34B but I didn't have a new lower low is in place now I do this is also the start of what we call the fanning of the EMAs what I want to see now is price action come up here and give me a new lower high now for safety sake here I'm going to wait for a super scalper and what I mean by that is this that there was a 21 B we can see here we've got the market is trending for super scalper uh, to, for the super scalper to form we must have three prior higher highs to have the super scalper form see here we only had two higher highs there's no super scalper and if we consider the logic behind the super scalper it plots and confirms when you've either got three higher highs like see here I've got one high high two high highs now I've got three and it closes so now I've got and we'll talk about this reversal now in a moment so now I've got a confirmed super scalp along now the same thing will happen which is what we want to take is this short right here now what's the difference well the super scalper just gives you a deeper pullback now in fact that is actually what we call a t25 it's a two candle pullback that's a three candle 
pull back but I just want to be conservative with my trading because of we've been very very choppy the drawback is it means that instead of having a six tick stop I've got an eight tick stop but so be it now I'd be in on the close of this candle my break-even is six ticks so let's just see what happens here one one two three four now not even a break-even now remember my stop is one tick up now I think that was four there wasn't it four five six seven eight now we've now got our eight ticks which is eighty dollars in that move now you could classify that as a 34b and that one as a 34b now I'm starting to perhaps become more convinced that we may have a trend happening now yes you could have traded that there uh, as a super scalper and a rule of one and that one now what you can do is this or just to mention this 34 B's are higher probability than 21 B's so if you're going to take a trade on a rule of one which is good had a rule of one there rule of one there and that could have been a rule of one you're better off waiting for 34 B's or deeper pullbacks but either way we're still coming out of this period of chop note down here we've come down to the 80 cent level and we get a little bit of a bounce there now it looks like we're going to have a retracement okay so we're waiting for up oh, now we've got a bit of a super scalper there now just here this is where we're going to look at the anchor chart why well down here I'm well and truly under do I have a 2d a 2d is where I've got double divergence so just uh, stay with me here for a moment uh, and just here this is what I also wanted to look at was this and here's the very reason why we wouldn't have taken this trade or considered not taking this trade see so how you had a one two three four candle pullback just there and we closed and we also closed right on the 80 cent level but you can see here at that stage we had a green candle here was that closed let me just have a look maybe it hadn't closed hmm I'll tell you what we're going to do I'm going to call that as a loss let me call that as a loss and the reason being I was looking at this uh, green candle here if we had that green candle that actually closed and formed which it may which it wouldn't have I don't think uh, I would have waited for a red candle and that would have kept me out of this trade okay would have kept me out of that trade but let's just call that a loss now as we then pull back and this I'll keep the, the uh, anchor chart one up for a moment so we're pulling back to the 200 EMA uh, and we're back here at the 34 nearly the 89 EMA so what we've got here is a change in the cloud cover there we see how it's now blue now remember earlier I said if you want to be very conservative only trade in the direction of the cloud cover or the 89 EMA once you get above there consider sitting those trades out until you have some compelling reason for either taking that trade or um, are just setting it out once again now we've now made a new higher high now sorry and no, I should finish this this would be by the way a 3b short this would be a 3b short okay so if you took this it is a 3b short and if you did take that with any trade where's my stop go one tick above look down here at the major swing low over here so here is a great potential target however very deep pullback do you know what that sometimes means we'll come back down here and then we get a reversal and look what you've got right there now this particular trade here it actually is a trade traders I'm going to not call this as a trade now 
you've got there if you put uh, your fib levels on there that would probably be about a 50% retracement just there note up here that we are still in a downtrend look at your 200 EMA coming down look over here at your 89 and 34 EMA coming down so we are in a downtrend at this stage now I want to point something out here to you see the MACD remember earlier I said to you keep an eye on the MACDs because they can be a giveaway um, of a potential trade coming up or a reversal when I've got a MACD that makes a new higher high quite often this will mean price will rally up to make a new higher high again and I end up with divergence likewise when you have a pullback to the 200 EMA one of the safest things you can do is to wait and see if you get what we call a bet the farm or major divergence that is is price action going to come up here and give me a double top which will quite often happen and gives me a divergence for a nice short let's see what happens here and the reason I don't want to take this sorry I don't think I finished saying that right in front of me I've got the 200 I've got all these major EMAs on the anchor chart as well so for me I'm just better off <coughs> excuse me to setting this out so let's just scroll candle by candle and see what happens here okay now right there and right there we now have the anchor chart one candle closes and look what we've got we'd actually call this a bet the farm see the divergence just there that's which is what makes these a great great trade now this is what this means if we get a pullback to the 200 you decide not to take these sometimes I'll actually work but it's not what we call or Dick Diamond would call an 80 20 trade so then we came back down and we rallied back up again reason why I didn't want to take that even though I could have picked up a few ticks out of it I'm still in a downtrend okay I'm still in a downtrend but what I've formed here is a new higher high and divergence on my MACD I've got a lower high higher high on price and a lower high on my MACD now because of that I'm only going to enter this trade when the anchor chart candle closes there down there at 89 so it would have been down there at 89 now at 89 up there up to 99 now there is a case where I would have had a 10 tick stop now I could have entered on the super scalper you don't enter on the rule of one why I don't have a trend so you can enter just waiting for the super scalper which means I would have an eight tick stop my stop loss is one tick up ab above there now ideally I'm after a 10 tick target I want to get to break even at six seven ticks just and I, that just depends a bit on the volatility so one two three four five six seven eight now there we was that eight I think we touched uh, eight ticks there now because we've touched eight I would have got out of that picking up only probably four ticks I probably would have taken my profit out of it one why well there I'm a little unsure because here we've made a couple of we're higher highs I've made a higher low so I don't have a clear trend at this stage and this is where we've got to be very cautious when we don't have that clear trend you know your 89 is flat so let's wait for another 2b setup okay now remember this is still only uh, 17 minutes after the market opened now I'm also just looking down here at the time so this has been going an hour and eight minutes so what I'm going to do is just see what happens here and then uh, I'm going to stop this video and we'll do another one uh, in the next day or two continuing on from this one now now of course if you want this every day or three not three trade I should say let me no, I'll tell you about that in a moment sorry this is what happens when I don't have a script <laughs> I'll tell you about the live room in a moment so just here we've got another this would actually be a 3b we can't see the anchor chart too but trust me we'd be bouncing 
okay so we're bouncing off the uh, 200 bouncing off the 34 and you'd have an EMA bounce on your anchor chart uh, too so we've got a short signal just there okay now look at this here now where would our stop loss be just up above just there okay one tick above now look at this now I've come down here now I've come down to 80 my entry would have been by the way down there at 85 I've, I've hit five ticks but note where we've bounced at the 80 80 level and another short look at all this sideways action here traders this is where I'd seriously be thinking this is over five minutes of taking what I call a haircut and what exactly do I mean by taking a haircut if I see I'm in extended period of chopping backwards and forwards and my uh, 89 EMA is leveling out look at my long-term stochastic it's in what we call no man's land I prefer to get out and take a loss than stay in it so we'll just see what happens here but I would have probably got out of that trade by now okay now we've got a breakout above the 200 EMA so and this is fairly typical by the way uh, and this is what I mean about a fast market so all of this is over 20 minutes now it's not normally like this but this is a Monday morning after the weekend so just just for a moment here I just want you to notice up above there see your 200 EMA now we'll see if we get a bounce up there you actually had a nice rule of one entry just there so you've broken up and above but let's wait for what we call the t25 the t25 is a two to five candle pullback wow look at this here now we've come up and note this here usually traders when we get up to the and look we've even shot past the 200 okay now just here this right there is what we call a t25 just there you've got a t25 look at the you've got a fanning of the EMAs okay you've got a t25 entry just there of alongside okay now you've got what have we got here you remember you're only trading along here you've now got that was a basically a six candle retracement but it's still a t25 to the long side and you've come right up there it's one tick away from 8120 but there's a whole lot to tell you about this particular area so let me just put this um uh, just put this in here so we shall continue uh, from this point uh, at a later stage now let me also say this one of the greatest challenges that most traders have particularly new traders is impatience is there's a lot of moving parts and unfortunately so many traders have a gambling um, mentality where they just want to get in and take a trade where's the next one without really understanding market structure so what I'm really trying to say here is you're going to have what I call aha moments as you watch my videos and of course on YouTube you've got tons and as members you know there's dozens of them be patient in your learning okay very important you will have aha experiences for an example I've already mentioned one of your best ways of trade of conservative ones can be only trade in the direction of the cloud if you've got a blue cloud you're only trading in the direction of that blue cloud once we get down here you've now got effectively the orange cloud you're not going to take anything at this stage now there is something setting up here which I will point out because it's a very important setup right now I know I said I was going to finish but let me point this out down here remember I mentioned that the 200 EMA connector support resistance and remember the bet the farm I mentioned earlier this is one in reverse see how we've come down we've bounced at the 81 a barrel here high risk entry 
34s against me for 21s against me flat uh, 89 EMA no real divergence price then fluffed along there for and that was fairly quick that was at 16 ah there we go so it was over one and a half minutes but look what then happened you then ended up with some beautiful divergence oops and let me just get this one right here so I can draw it in and show you so there to there you had a higher low with a double bottom at 81 a barrel the support of the 200 EMA and the support of the 200 EMA over here when you look at this trade here where'd you stop be your stop would be one tick below where would your entry be on the close of your anchor chart one back in the direction of the trend when we take these trades as with any trade in fact I'm always looking over to the left where's my last major swing high it was up there at 8119 so if my entry there was at 9 uh, and that was at 19 I've got a good potential target here of 10 ticks quite often we will um, what we call stair step our way up but uh, let's just see what happens here now also see your t20 just there okay and as you can see quite often the t20s are tradable this t20 here because price did not close under the 200 we call this a t20 trend continuation trade t20 trend continuation trades usually set up just after setups like this but if you miss that you've got your t20 away you go now one of the things you can do here and just to show you traders this uh, to help you identify these where is it let me just quickly sorry everyone just wanna right, here we go what you can actually do is color the back panel you can do this see that just there so with using the MA cross builder on NTA um, that can be a really good reminder that we potentially are going to trend back in the direction of, of, the, tr of the trend and there we go again and beautiful we exceed that now remember it always you must continually expand your charts to see what's happening as a big picture I won't go on any further because I want to continue on another video remember there are two setups initially to focus on your two B's and your 34 B's you bet the farms your t20s you'll pick these up in time now as we do finish a very quick plug <laughs> traders now if you haven't been in my coaching sessions for some time or perhaps you've never been in the coaching sessions you can join me uh, in the email the link uh, the email you would have received with this link you'll see there there's a link to join for one month of coaching for $97 a month so I run eight live two hour sessions each month where we're going through tick by tick what we're doing now the psychology of trading and just a ton of other information now I will point out traders that just I'll, I'll pull that over on another screen just to actually show you this let me just uh, get this open so that's uh, basically $12 per um, coaching session now if you can't make the live session um, uh, and it, what you can see there whoops what you can so let me expand that I've been running these for years okay and this is just uh, back to uh, these but it goes much further back from there this is just the Google Drive so in each session of course if you're unaware I've got a ton of handouts um, uh, there's PowerPoints where we're talking about all of uh, all the aspects of trading as well as trades of a day etc now that's uh, 97 a month cancel that in time after your first month now if you want to be and live trade with us or with me uh, I do eight live coaching sessions or live trading sessions sorry 
eight live coaching sessions and 12 live trading room sessions a month now they start uh, two weeks a month we start at 4 a.m. Eastern and the other two weeks we start at 5 a.m. Eastern before the market opens the main market opens if you can't attend the live sessions they are recorded or you can join me for a year and save yourself a couple of thousand dollars at the same time so five hundred and ninety seven dollars gives you a 12 month membership to both the coaching room eight sessions a month so that's basically 96 sessions over the year and 144 trading sessions live trading sessions over the year that's only two dollars fifty for every live trading session that's basically a dollar twenty five an hour for live coaching and once again if you can't attend the live room they are recorded as all of the sessions are so if you're feeling a little overwhelmed or you want to master the art of day trading shortest possible time come and join the sessions that's where we keep drilling down on these setups step by step this is not rocket science it's about um, learning how to trade there are no certainties but learning how to trade with probabilities okay well over time the next video you'll see uh, very very soon thanks traders cheers